Hey, welcome to Stay In A Make Do. You wanna see what I got? It's the good stuff, three ply. Now more than ever, toilet paper has become a precious resource. So, how about a homemade toilet paper tracker so you can be more mindful of your usage? Take a look at this. It works thusly. Install a kitchen foil tab on your loo roll and install two kitchen foil contacts on your loo roll holder, attaching them with blue tack or double-sided tape. The wires coming from the foil contacts connect to the microvit on pin zero, which is this gold contact here, and ground, which is this gold contact here. Kitchen roll conducts electricity, so when the toilet roll turns, the strip of foil bridges the gap between these two contacts completing the circuit, which the micro bit can detect. And tick goes the counter. The things you'll need for this are a micro bit or two, but we'll come to the second one later. Some kitchen foil and some crocodile clip wires. Blue tack is also extremely handy. Should we take a look at the code? Take a guess how many blocks we're going to need to complete this project. Just four. Four blocks is all you need to complete your toilet paper tracker. Four blocks for episode four, in fact. It's kind of a pity we used a million blocks in episode two. We'll start with this one from Input on pin P0 pressed. This block monitors pin zero and can tell when it's connected to ground momentarily and then disconnected. So if you take a cable from P0 and a cable from ground and you touch them together momentarily, it's like pressing a button. You can use anything you like to complete the circuit as long as it conducts electricity, even your own body. The micro bit only uses a very tiny amount of electricity to do this, so it's completely safe. Next, we're gonna create a variable again to store the number of times P0 gets pressed. I'm calling mine counter, but you can call yours something else if you like. Grab, change counter by one, and snap it in. Now our counter will go up by one each time P0 is pressed but we still want to display the result. In forever, I am going to stick a show number, and the number we want to show is our counter variable, which we can find here. Four blocks, and we are done, that is it. Download that code onto your micro bit and try it for yourself. In the previous project, we practiced getting two micro bits to communicate via radio. What if we use that here so we can get a remote reading of our toilet paper tracker? Go back to your code and we're gonna add an extra two or three blocks that will let us do just this. Just like last time, we want to put a radio set group here in on start. Make a note of this number because micro bits will only talk to other micro bits in the same radio group. So this number has to be the same for both your transmitter and receiver. Then chuck in a radio send number into forever. And the number we want to broadcast to the other micro bit is our counter variable. So drop that in as well. That's the code for your transmitter micro bit finished. But this time we need to write separate code for our receiver micro bit. The receiver doesn't need to count anything or to transmit any data, it just needs to receive the signal from the transmitter micro bit. After you've dropped the first lot of code on your first micro bit, open up a new make code project and start by adding the radio set group to on start. Again, make sure this number 
is the same number as in the other programme. Lastly, take this on radio received, received number block and drag it into the workspace. Clip inside a show number block. And the number we want to show is the number we've received. So there's a little trick here. The micro bit has already made us a variable to store the incoming number and it's hiding here. We can click and drag this received number and put it in our show number block. Now put this code on your second micro bit, attach both the battery packs and watch what happens. That's it for episode four. So remember, stay in, make do, and use the appropriate amount of Lee Roll.